My name's Danny O'Brien. I'm Senior Fellow for DWeb and Strategy at the Filecoin Foundation. Um, and I'm just going to take these, uh, these few short minutes to talk a little bit about positioning where uh, we see the Filecoin ecosystem at the Foundation within uh, a broader context. One of the things that's that you will all actually yeah, I got a little bit of time to ask. So who here considers themselves part of the Filecoin ecosystem? Put up your hands. Okay. It's, it's all right if you're not. We won't throw you out. It's fine. Um, uh, who here sees themselves as part of the wider Ethereum or DevConnect community? Put that out. Okay. That's very interesting. How many of you have um, either heard or um, said yourself the term thin waste? in the last 24 hours. Yeah, okay, so Juan Galen has heard that. So thin waste is one, of, it's waste as in thin waste rather than waste as in waste paper basket. It's one of those things which is a sort of a viral term. And if I leave you with anything um, in this next 10 minutes, it's that I really want you to start using this term as though it was as cool and clever sounding as thin waste. And also, just as a little reward, if you ever hear someone say this, or in fact the words thin waste, um, drop me a message on the Filecoin Slack and I will send you a gift. But you have to be the first one to spot when somebody says that. It's a sort of time to thin waste kind of challenge. So um, the term crossing the streams comes from the popular science fiction thriller action comedy blockbuster from the mid-1980s. Hands up anybody who has actually seen or heard this. Good, you're making an old man very happy. Uh, you may have thought that was just a light bit of entertainment, but it's gonna make the rest of the Falcoin ecosystem make a lot more sense to you. Um, so uh, the phrase, just to fill, fill this in for the people who don't know, um, the story of Ghostbusters is a group of academic researchers working in the, uh, a fairly narrow space um, who are uh, forced out of their uh, existing uh, well-resourced capital intensive environment at university and struggle to survive in, uh, in the private sector. Um, in a somewhat uh, unfriendly regulatory environment. Uh, if you're uh, at all involved in Web3, uh, you, may, you may recognize this particular uh, moment in time. I don't know why that quote um, stuck in my head, but it certainly did. Um, so uh, my argument here, oh, and by the way, the phrase crossing the streams, for those of you who don't know, very early on in uh, the show, uh, they say don't cross the streams, and then at the end, in order to fix everything, uh, they cross the streams, and it's okay. So I'm going to argue that there's a certain kind of similar kind of moving leaning into what we fear at this particular moment in the Filecoin ecosystem that's borne out by uh, previous experiences, not only in the, uh, the uh, computing industry, um, but also in Ghostbusters and its sequels. Um, so this is, uh, this is my thesis. Um, thanks to Ian for coming up with the title. Um, if this whole cryptography thing doesn't work out, I'm hoping to spin this into a book um, at Stanford. Uh, so, um, so what do I mean by this? Well, let me pick out something that perhaps has uh, a greater connection to uh, what people are going through right now. Does anybody recognize this? You don't really need to. Nope. Okay. Some people recognize this. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. So this is Game Never Ending. Um, it was a web-based game that was developed in 2004 to absolute resounding um, uh, lack of product market fit. It was a brilliant game, um, but people didn't really uh, want to play it. Uh, a huge amount of resources were put into it, some really brilliant programmers, some really clever thought. In particular, it had an excellent uh, photo sharing, uh, uh, screenshot sharing uh, facility that worked with chat. Uh, Stuart Butterfield uh, took that element of the uh, existing tooling that they built around Game Never Ending and turned that to, into a thing called Flickr. Has anyone heard of Flickr? Yeah, okay. So Flickr was probably the poster child of Web 2.0. It was really the first uh, major user-generated content 
uh, open API uh, tool. It reached 150 million users. I don't think that was a maximum. That was like actually pretty recently. And in 2005, back when 25 million was a lot of money, um, it was sold to Yahoo. Uh, one of the other lessons that you might want to take from this is never sell to Yahoo. Um, we, uh, incidentally, at the Falcon Foundation, are extremely proud to uh, support Flickr.org because one of the things that happened because of that early entry into the photography sharing market is Flickr became the repository of probably the largest, largest archive of public domain and creative commons licensed content. And we're working uh, with the nonprofit arm of uh, the Flickr community to work out how to store that data outside of a commercial context uh, for all eternity and for all humanity. Um, so Stuart Butterfield uh, sold Flickr um, and then went back to doing games. Uh, this is Glitch, who's heard of Glitch? You can see a pattern here, there's two people who really like Stuart Butterfield productions. So uh, Glitch was a great game, my uh, son loved playing it, um, but once again, uh, despite being a, a, a work of art, frankly, and a beautifully constructed, incredibly interesting tooling, it failed to catch fire in the market. Um, and so uh, what happened was Stuart Butterfield, uh, spot the pattern, took some of that amazing tooling and thought to themselves, well, what, what, what can work? in a, a, a product market uh, fit. Uh, one of the things people really enjoyed, apart from the font in Glitch, um, was its uh, background chat tooling. Uh, that became Slack. Um, Slack, uh, similarly, uh, uh, extracted from the code of a uh, web game, uh, 20 million, I'm really surprised 20 million, I would have thought more, um, but sold a 27.5 billion sale to Salesforce. Lesson there, sell to Salesforce. Um, but also, always look back at the code and the tooling that you have already built and that you're already familiar with, because in a completely different context, that's probably going to be um, the, the gold that's going to let you proceed. So the two streams I'm talking about that we, we, we worry about crossing is sort of the weird and the normal. Uh, right now, we're in a moment in Web3 where it's really hard to know whether we should lean into our existing communities and continue to build tooling around the very uh, lofty goals we have of transforming uh, the world, uh, the finance and the incentive systems that we work under, or buckling down and trying to produce something that just works for the normal people in the street, right? Where do, where do we go with something like Filecoin? Do we create something that's an amazing incentive structure that uses uh, cryptographic proofs to verify that data is being permanently stored? Um, or do we try and create a, a drop box? Um, well, I think the answer is we cross those two streams, right? What we, what we have right now, and I think I've said this in a number of talks, is an amazing toolkit. I think when I first described coming into the Filecoin space, um, having, you know, presumably just been playing Glitch for the last 10 years, um, I was astounded by the investment of brilliant minds and, uh, uh, frankly, incredible academic level research and capital investment uh, to build incentive systems that could create an amazing infrastructure and an amazing uh, amount of code. And at this moment of um, uh, uh, wobbliness in uh, the macro economy, it's very easy to underestimate this. It's very easy to suddenly think uh, either, goodness, we have to keep cranking out absolute brilliance, which we do, um, or we have to abandon all of that and go back to a fiat world just to survive in this bear market. And what I'd like to suggest to you and kind of the lessons that we're picking out here at the foundation is, is that you can kind of do both, right? You can kind of cross the streams. You can take the pre-existing elements that your unique um, uh, insight is, is to how they work and put them together in forms that the average person can use. And that's how we scale up. So I picked these, these are, just, these are just absolutely random picks. I just didn't want to get into one of those situations where there were 200 icons and they were all too small to see the name of and you're desperately looking going, is my product in there? Oh yeah, it's right at the bottom. So uh, 
if your product is not here, it's in my head. I know what you're doing is amazing. I'm going to pick out some of these. Uh, you can. So you can is a great example of something which uh, our whole ecosystem in many ways needs or depends on, which is a capability-based decentralized identity system. And it's already being adopted in uh, some of the tooling, such as Web3 storage. If you don't know about it, you should go and investigate it because you are extremely close. They're almost in the room with you, with some of the people developing and building those tools. And it's that kind of close association to, to those people, an understanding of where they come from that will let you build new tools that um, uh, uh, the rest of the world can use. A station is a good example of something that's just evolving at the moment. You have a, a first class opportunity to seize what it means to have distributed computation at an um, at, at at individual computer level to build really powerful experiments that you can use as a groundwork to build um, exist, uh, uh, tooling that works for existing uh, consumer or even enterprise applications. I've thrown S3 in here. I know that's a weird one to throw in, as some of you know, like um, some of the, the concentration on uh, what we can, uh, uh, how we're thinking about data onboarding right now um, uh, is uh, moving away from S3, which was this uh, fantastic kind of uh, uh, set of tools. Um, but I will point out, right? that we're an open source environment here, right? I was just, the reason why this is here is I suddenly went, I want to look at the GitHub repo where S3 lives, and it's, once again, it's crashed UFO technology, right? Like you have all of this amazing tooling, there's fantastic libraries there. Pick through what you have right now and take the components that you realize that no one else will recognize and include it in a unique product. Um, and of course, there are, there are dozens, as I say, of products um, and tools and protocols that all work in this way. Um, the, the call here is to kind of look around you. Um, that's another really good show that I could probably do a talk on. But anyway, um, the, the, the key thing here is that um, I think in the Falcon ecosystem, I'm thinking more widely the Ethereum ecosystem, we often think about how we can serve like the really ambitious goals that we have. I just want to remind you that you're in a unique position in the same way as Stuart Butterfield and people in Web 2.0 and later had of being inches away from amazing technology that has uses you can just pluck and use, and your friends and colleagues and on Slack channels with the people who are making those things. You don't have to make them themselves. You can talk to them. You can be their first unique user. Um, Filecoin Plus is one of the early users of Station, and just being one of those unique um, original customers gives you a huge influence on this stuff. Um, the other thing that I'm going to end with is that um, uh, this is sort of about leaning into kind of the weird, interesting tooling you have away from with you, but also the way to um, a new user base that's willing to pay for your product is actually to find weird use cases that match that kind of thing. You don't have to think about the generic enterprise, and you don't have to think about the generic user. And this is something else that, that, that um, I'm not saying we're weird at the Falcon Foundation and the Falcon Foundation for the Decentralized Web, but we spend a lot of time talking to people who've come to us because they see a potential application in the Filecoin space. And they're really compelling applications from really interesting corners of the application space. So we've been reached independently by the CSI community, but in particular the genomics community, uh, Geodata. We have a fantastic pro uh, project um, that you can find out on our website, which is storing Geodata um, because the Filecoin network and IPFS offers so many unique applications for that. I'm not going to read the list, but you've heard some uh, of my uh, colleagues talk about these. Um, we can put you in touch with these groups, and they're eager to talk to you to work together to cross the streams uh, in this way, to take the uh, weirdest elements of our community and match them to uh, the most desperately needed uh, applications and product market fits uh, existing in very uh, uh, promising, but potentially narrow or hard to know about domains. So uh, I should finish. Um, there's a big sign that says get off in big letters over there, so I will do that. I will leave you with this giant QR code and the phrase, who are you going to call? Um, because I, I don't think with an English accent I can really say 
the actual catchphrase, um, set up a meeting with me and let's talk about what tooling you can use in the Filecoin uh, ecosystem and what clients can we introduce you to to cross the chasm and cross the beams. Thank you very much.